When we talk about coastal development um, and housing and infrastructure on the coast, um, in Southern California, one of the key conversations centers around housing and homes. And if we look uh, right here, you can see an example of how people like to build like they like to build everywhere, as opposed to modifying. So we have a hedgerow here, which is, are plants that don't even belong to uh, this area uh, and uh, are, are more of a suburban type of approach, including a lawn, which is imported from the notions of Europe, that that's how we should look. And so they have a, a grass lawn to step on. All of that requires a huge amount of irrigation, and all of that is leading to, you can see down here, a palm tree, right over here, a palm tree growing virtually on the beach where there normally would never be enough uh, water with an olive tree right in front of me. And so these, um, the amount of water and the need for um, water comes from this crazy landscape. And we can see all kinds of, um, in this case, some drought tolerant, but things like roses and stuff, which are um, you know, pretty much uh, hugely water intensive plants. Again, we have these <coughs> uh, palm trees growing virtually on the beach, which is, um, what could never be supported without the huge amount of irrigation that these folks um, pump onto their properties. If we go down even further, we can see some more examples of some of the altered, um, some of the, the, you know, not nefarious, but what ultimately comes at a price for our coastal ecosystem. See, a lot of this planted vegetation. So this stuff we have, um, uh, for example, we're just above the beach right here, and we see citrus trees because, you know, that's the best place for citrus is right next to the sea spray. And, you know, of course, when you, when you put in these types of structures, you have all types of structural challenges like erosion and like crumbling infrastructure, as you see here on this house. But then it leads to people doing things that are actively problematic. So in addition to all the other stuff, in addition to eroding the cliff by all this water, again, here's another example of a walkway that's, that's starting to canter and, and fall because, again, this is a shifting dynamic landscape and people think they can put a, a, a single structure here like a walkway. Again, the walkway here is all cracking and, and sliding and slipping into the ocean. But then right here, they've actually planted all things around it. Rondo Donax are hugely problematic invader um, across all of our riparian areas in Southern California. And here, um, this was most clearly planted so that when the, the common folks are out here walking on the beach, um, they can, th this pathway is shielded. And so they clearly planted a bunch of stuff, things didn't take, and so they've resorted to this very weedy, um, very aggressive uh, plant. You know, if you're just looking for a windscreen, this is perfect. But now we have a rondo on the beach here, uh, in this case in summer. Wind. And as we can see here, it's beginning to escape. So now it's starting to spread up the hill and go elsewhere, and this will soon become a huge problem. So um, coastal development has all kinds of challenges, not the least of which are these unintended consequences from these um, uh, houses and homeowners whose vision of what a coastal home should be derived not from the coast, but from uh, other parts of the country and other parts of their lives.